Hi friends! Some time ago I released a video in which I showed you this device, a mega ohm meter issued in the Third Reich. Many viewers call this video the best on the channel. I highly recommend it for viewing. I myself have repeatedly reviewed it. The link is in the description. The second part dedicated to this device will also be released, I hope very soon. In the meantime, let's move from the Third Reich to the Soviet Union at the time when the Great Patriotic War began. What was electronics like in those years in the USSR? Thanks to my viewer Alexei, an interesting curiosity came into my hands. A voltmeter issued in the Soviet Union, or rather, in 1941. My great respect to Alexei. The case of this device is made of food. It's worn out by time. But running ahead, I will say that it's completely working. Although backlight was already invented at the beginning of the 20th century, Many cases for both household and industrial equipment were made of wood or metal. The tree isn't capricious, easy to handle, environmentally friendly. Although regarding environmental friendliness, it is not entirely clear for whom, for a person or for a tree that was cut down. The device is large, weighs about 1.8 kg and, by the way, it's quite rare. On the internet, you can find upon advertisements for sale. But the problem is that they are positioned as a vintage device and they come up with a price, without any history. What kind of device? Unknown what factory it was made by? In this video, I will try to answer some of these questions, as well as disassemble the device to see what ancient technologies look like. This device isn't a Soviet design. It is copied from the German voltmeters of the Hartmann and Braun company. Here, only the scale was slightly modernized and some other minor changes. Whether the USSR had a license, I don't know. But the fact remains, the company Hartman and Brown had a patent for such a device dating back to 1910. Although it is necessary to make allowance for the fact that such a concept of voltmeters and measuring devices in general was popular at that time and every self-respecting company had something similar. Such giants as Siemens Skalski, General Electric, Roller Smiths Company and others had devices in similar design. Of course, the device is valuable, at least because it's completely handmade. The device has a pointer type indicator, a convenient handle for transportation, as well as a side cover to protect the measuring head. There is also a small lock. It is designed to measure DC voltage and has three main ranges, 3, 15 and 150 volts. The terminals corresponding to these ranges are on the top. One more terminal is the main plus and is used for all ranges. In fact, these terminals are something like a range switch. Only the wires need to be rearranged manually. At the bottom of the face plate, there is a zero adjustment, a potentiometer. Judging by the inscription on the scale, the device was released in 1941, so it's more than 80 years old. Of the other identification marks, we can see the emblem of the manufacturer at the very top of the scale. Now, a short advertisement. Tired of home PCB technology? Or your PCB isn't as beautiful as you'd like? Company GLC will produce for you boards of any complexity and size. The minimum cost of a batch of 10 by 10 cm starts at $2, and the price doesn't change depending on the chosen color. Fast delivery, convenient payment methods, and the highest level quality are guaranteed. You will find a link to the GLC website in the description below the video. I spent a lot of time looking for information about the German mega ohm meter while the Soviet voltmeter was authenticated in just half an hour of searching on the internet. Because with the release date everything is clear, it remains only to understand where, or rather at what factory, was made. And this is most likely the Moscow factory Tis Pribor. The factory even now has the same logo. Why I'm not 100% sure that the voltmeter is produced by this factory? In fact, everything is a little confusing here. The fact is that, according to data from the Internet, this and many other factories were part of the All Union State Trust Taplo Control and had a common logo. In 1943, the trust was transferred to the Ministry or People's Commissariat of the Aviation Industry. Therefore, there is also a winged version of this logo. Therefore, there is a possibility that this voltmeter was made at another factory which were under the general logo. Unfortunately, it is very difficult to find out whether this is so. 
In addition, on the internet, I made the same voltmeters and other measuring devices in similar cases made at other factories of the Soviet Union. The Tis Pribor factory itself was founded in 1933. During the Soviet era, it was one of the organizations involved in the creation of the first Soviet atomic bomb. In general, these are cool guys who made high-precision instruments for all industries. The mentioned factory operates to this day. As far as I understand, judging by their website and product catalog, at the moment they produce all sorts of hydropneumatic things. Of course, I wrote to them asking them to provide some information about these devices to confirm or deny my information about the history of the factory, etc. The answer was received very quickly. The current owners of the factory have been the legal successors since 2012, and alas, they don't have archival documents for this voltmeter. It's a pity. Let's continue studying the device. You're probably wondering what's inside. I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that the device still has factory seals, that is, no one has opened it for more than 80 years. Well, we will be the first. I understand your high expectations, but so far we have only mold and solder oxides, possibly even dangerous, so we will clean the device for further study. Unfortunately, not much was possible to clean. This is the result of unfavorable storage conditions. In the hope that I will get to the magnetic system, I unscrewed the side struts, but this didn't give me any result. It turns out that the voltmeter is disassembled from the front, not from the back. Having unscrewed the corresponding self-tapping screws, we ended up there where the person's glance hadn't been for as long as 80 years. It's a pity that these smells of old age mixed with the smell of dampness cannot be conveyed through the camera or maybe this is for the best. Here again we are greeted by faded paint, oxides and mold. The magnetic system in principle is no different from more modern ones, the same spring, a loop with a winding, nothing special. Nearby we see four coils, in fact these are resistors, and these are in theory high precision resistors of that period, wound by hand. They are designed for a specific input voltage. The wire has silk insulation. This device doesn't contain any other components besides resistors and the magnetic system. The circuit for such voltmeters are very simple. Microammeter and a set of resistors for different ranges. In some cases, resistive dividers can be used. On the scale, you can see the inscription 7.5 mA. This is the maximum current consumption of the indicator in the event of a complete deflection of the arrow. And apparently, this is true. Later, I partially assembled the device for testing. Partially, since I intend to slightly restore it the other day. Now the first range is selected. The entire scale is 3 volts. The voltage is 1.5 volts applied to the terminals and the voltmeter shows 1.5 volts. The second range, the entire scale of 15 volts. 10 volts is applied to the input. Everything is as it should be. The whole scale is 150 volts. 100 volts are applied. It still adequately showed these 100 volts. No problem with work, although what problems can there be? Nothing can break except the indicator. Having a German mega ohm meter at hand, I kept visually comparing these two devices, and I must admit that German design much more thoughtfully than ours. A simple example, let's say I want to disassemble the device and get to the measuring head. I will have to unscrew four self-tapping screws with a flat head using a screwdriver in an external uncomfortable position. Believe me, it's not easy. Access is difficult. In addition, the width of the groove in the screw is very small and you will have to sweat a lot. You think that's all, no? Next, you need to unscrew a bunch of self-tapping screws on the front side of the device. Get to the indicator, unscrew the screws holding the scale, and only after that you can remove the measuring head. You can say that I am doing something wrong and that it is enough to unscrew the screws on the wooden clamps. But in fact, nothing will come of it. The metal racks to which the scale is screwed will interfere and you cannot unscrew them from the back of the device. The Germans also used similar self-tapping screws but not in hard-to-reach places.
To remove the measuring head of the mega ohmmeter, it's enough to unscrew several nuts to which there is free access. Of course, this doesn't mean that our device of those years is much worse than the German one. They both survive to this day in working condition, and the technologies used in them are both about the same. And one shouldn't forget the fact that it was the Germans who dictated fashion those times. This voltmeter is a piece of the history of the Soviet Union made perhaps in the most difficult period, in the year when the bloodiest war began, in the year of the Great Patriotic War. Naturally, in the modern world, this grandfather will bring little practical benefit, except for demonstration purposes, because the movement of the arrow along the large scale looks beautiful and clear. The place for such devices is the museum, and the growing generation seeing such things would be proud of the fact that they are the heirs of people who survived everything and defeated Nazism, people who knew how to make modern technology according to the standards of that time. It would seem an ordinary voltmeter, but it has seen a lot, passed from hand to hand, and has survived to this day. My task is to show it to you and preserve it for future generations, because such devices are fewer and fewer over time. On this, my friends, I finish another video with an overview of a vintage device. Please don't forget to rate it. Now I say goodbye, until we meet again, with you was Kassian TV.